Hi, this is Dr. Christina Holub, and this is Nam Nguyen. And we're going to do the voiceover for this orientation. It is for the Master of Public Health program. And our agenda is to start with welcome and introductions, program overview and expectations, we'll review coursework, talk about graduate student policies, operations, advising and student support, and lastly, um, going over who you should talk to about questions, and we're also happy to answer questions at the end. Introduction, who's who in our Masters of Public Health program? Our Interim Director of Public Health and the Associate Dean for CEHHS is Dr. Deborah Criston. Um, she has been at CSUSM since 2003, and her one of her main research interests includes uh, physiological ecology, especially if it's related to parasites. And she also received her PhD from the University of California at Riverside. Next, we have Dr. Emmanuel E. Boniwe. He is our expert in environmental health. Um, he also has a lot of experience in service learning, um, collaboration, and research, and he received his PhD from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And this is me, Dr. Christina Holub. Um, my experience is largely in social and behavioral sciences, health education, health behavior um, in public health. I have a focus in health disparities with Latino and Pacific Islander populations. Um, and I received my PhD from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Dr. Deborah Martin, she is our expert in epidemiology and anything related to data. Um, she also has a focus in health disparities, especially related to American Indian uh, communities. She has a long standing collaboration with um, Indian Health Council and she received her PhD from UCSD SDSU Joint Doctoral Program. Dr. Asher Santos is our expert in global health. Um, his interests include understanding how relationships between nations impact health. He's also had um, a focus in Latin American countries and does HIV related research. And he received his PhD from also from USCSD STSU Joint Doctoral Program. Miss Lisa Bandong is our internship coordinator and lecturer. Um, her interests include maternal and child health, um, lactation supportive environments, and PCOS research. Um, she received her MPH um, from Cal State Fullerton. Ms. Jessica Wilson. She is our Administrative Support Coordinator. So anything related to program administration or your classes, she is the go-to person. And Nam, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> As a Graduate Student Services Coordinator, I'll be working with you throughout your whole degree progression, ensuring that you've met all of the graduate milestones, as well as assisting you in any administrative university policies or procedures, or pretty much I can help you, help direct you to any other resources that you might need on campus. Perfect. Now we're on to program overview and expectations. All right, so for degree requirements, um, your coursework is 42 units, 42 semester units, and within that you have seven core classes and four concentration specific classes. Um, you also have internship, which is 180 hours, and that's meant to give you public health practical experience. And again, Miss Lisa Bandong um, is the internship coordinator, and she works really hard to develop partnerships and relationships. And what she does is announce um, opportunities that are available, but ultimately it is uh, the responsibility of the student to find your internship. And when you're ready to get started as a program, we help you through that process. And again, as Miss Lisa Bandong is the internship coordinator, she can help answer any questions that you have. The other part of your 42 units is an integrative learning uh, culminating experience, and that is either a thesis or a capstone project. A capstone project is, again, more practical um, experience. It could be 
a program evaluation, it could be working with a community to come up with educational materials, and that's usually done in a group of uh, three to four students. Whereas a thesis is more research oriented, it's one person, and you might do, for example, secondary data analysis on a health outcome or health behavior that you have an interest in. So that's your thesis and your capstone project. Um, and then you have three um, main milestones that you must accomplish um, for this program. The first one is called GWAR, which is the Graduate Writing Assessment Requirement, and that actually takes place in PH 503. Um, in that class, there is a literature review, so we'll assist you with your writing, um, and that can help you pass GWAR. So again, that's a writing assessment. And that helps you with advancement to candidacy. So once you pass GWAR, you have a 3.0, and you have an approved thesis or capstone project, you are able to advance to candidacy. And then ultimately, when you are done with your thesis and capstone project, it's in the library and you're ready to graduate, um, that is considered your milestone for your culminating experience. All of this information and the ones that we'll talk about um, coming up can be found in the MPH handbook. It's available in MPH Central, which we'll also cover in the next slide. Um, but generally, academic standards, minimum 3.0, um, any course that you get a C minus or lower should be repeated, and you cannot repeat more than two courses. Um, student conduct. Um, of course, there is a student conduct code and professional standards, but more broadly, our expectation is that students will conduct themselves in a professional manner, whether it's um, through our program, in your classes, with each other, at your internship sites, and that includes, you know, in-person um, and general communication. So just remember that you're always representing CSUSM and our public health program. And then lastly, um, students are expected to maintain open communication with instructors and advisors. So if you have any questions, just make sure to reach out. Um, also, it is preferred that once you get your CSUSM email, that you use that email for communication. And here is the link to MPH Central. Uh, if you have any questions about processes, procedures, or policies, um, be sure to check out MPH Central because we have information um, on thesis capstone, information on internships, and all the announcements that Ms. Um, Bandong puts up. We have the handbook and also frequently asked questions. So this is a good place to look um, if you have any questions whatsoever. So again, this is MPH Central. And a little bit about our coursework. Now our courses are eight weeks long. Um, a typical semester is 16 weeks. So instead of four classes at the same time, it's broken down into two sessions. So you'll have session one, which is eight weeks, and you'll have two courses. And then the next eight weeks is session two, which will be another two courses. Um, it is accelerated and fast paced, but this does also allow you to concentrate on two courses at the same time. Now for course registration, um, you will receive an email with the course number. Um, and if you click on the online version of this presentation, there are step-by-step -step instructions. And again, if you have any questions, to direct those questions about registration to Ms. Jessica Wilson. Um, of course, we expect that everyone is active um, and attends classes. It's best for um, achieving the student learning outcomes that we have for the courses. Um, we expect you to be present and prepared, and it really does help promote an effective learning environment. Coursework. You should have a sheet that lists all the courses and when you should take them, but generally, again, you have seven core courses within your specific concentration, whether global health or health promotion and education. Um, followed by your four concentration specific courses, so seven core, four concentration specific. Um, then you have one elective course that is from the other concentration, and you have your internship, which is the applied practice experience, and lastly your culminating experience or integrative learning experience, which is either the thesis or capstone. 
Now the type of platform that we use is called um, Moodle. So if you have experience with Blackboard, for example, it's, it's pretty similar. But here at CSUSM, we call our um, Moodle Cougar courses. And this is where you access um, all your courses. Uh, one thing to note is that if you don't see the course that you are registered for, um, sometimes professors will make the course visible a little bit later or when they have the Cougar course or Moodle available. So if you have any questions and you're not seeing your um, course listed, um, please contact the instructor. It may just be that they're um, still working on the content and haven't opened it up yet, or um, there might be something else. So if you have any questions, um, contact your instructor directly. Great, thanks, Dr. Hulub. Let's talk a little bit about graduate student policies and operations. All of this information can be found in the university catalog as well as the MPH handbook. Both items can be linked from MPH Central, but we will go over a couple of the more important items that we get a lot of questions about frequently. First, the add drop deadline for your courses. Now, since your classes are eight week long, you don't follow the 16 week uh, add drop process. The deadline to drop any courses is the seventh day of each session at 11.59 p.m. But the biggest thing is before you drop any courses, once a class has already begin, begun, please do contact your advisor, whether it be your faculty advisor or our office. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are making the best decisions as it comes to your program progression, since again, the program is accelerated. Now, in terms of the cost of attendance, tuition is $599 per unit. Um, in addition, there are fees. If you click on the online presentation here, you can see the full breakdown of each of the fees. If you are a financial aid seeking student, you'll want to contact financial aid directly for any questions regarding your packaging and account. Um, and also, you want to make sure that when it comes to your account, all students are responsible for monitoring their own individual account for any type of holds, balances, or any outstanding items. Now, this program is accelerated at 16 months, but we do understand that sometimes things do happen. Uh, the university does require that all master's degree be finished within a five-year time span. However, if you do exceed over the 16 months, you'll do need to submit a leave of absence. So if anything occurs, you'll want to contact me or your faculty advisor so we can advise you on the best uh, steps for your particular situation. And if you have additional questions on particular policies, you can also visit our Office of Graduate Studies and Research, and the link is embedded here on the online presentation. Now advising and student support, we want to make sure that you have a good support system as you're navigating through your program. All students will be assigned a faculty advisor at the beginning of the program. If you have not received the name of your faculty advisor, you'll be getting it shortly. Faculty advisors are really the subject matter experts in their field. You can go to your advisor for a wealth of um, questions, anything about uh, what you can do with your public health degree. They can assist you in perhaps connecting you with internship opportunities as well, or even just discussing any concerns about the uh, practicum or coursework. You'll also have our office, which is the CEHHS Student Services Department. Ultimately, our role here is to ensure that you get your degree. We wanna make sure that we monitor your, your file, that you're meeting all the milestones that Dr. Haloub had mentioned earlier your GOR, your advancement to candidacy, as well as a culminating experience. We'll be processing all of that. We'll be guiding you through any leaves of absences, any other administrative processes that the university does require. And at the end, uh, it's always my favorite time of the year is when I get to give the green light for that degree to be conferred. We wanna ensure that you always know how you're doing and what your progress is throughout the program. And the best way to do this is through the Academic Requirements Report, which is called the ARR here. To access your ARR, you'll log into your Student Services Center through My CSUSM. Now, I want to make a distinction that this is not your Cougar courses. This is your own separate account. So in your Student Services Center, it'll have your schedule, your account balances, information on any financial aid, 
um, as well as your program progression. So to access your ARR, you'll log into your CSUSM account and follow the instructions there. And there you'll see all the courses you've taken, items that are in progress, items that are outstanding, as well as your progression through your milestones. And whether you're a online student or you're a hybrid model, you have a wealth of campus resources at your fingertips. Anything from academics, the writing center, veteran center, uh, the career center. If you go ahead and click on the link here on the online presentation, it'll get you directly to their hours and locations. And now for a little bit of fun, as well as professional development, our graduate organization public health group called GoPH. Uh, this was founded three years ago uh, to help really supplement the experience of our public health students through professional and educational developments. Our GoPH group has uh, collaborated with our nursing association to put on such events like Love Your Heart. Um, and there's also some great leadership opportunities uh, within the organization. We do have an exec board that has officers that will be um, having elections soon. So if that's something of interest to you, go ahead and contact them at the email listed here. Now, if you have any additional questions, here's some information, our contact information for Dr. Kristan, Jessica, and myself. Um, again, if we can't answer them directly, we're gonna be more than happy to find you the right contact person. But other than that, we are very excited to see you progress through our program, and we can't wait to see you finish in 16 months. Go Cougars! <laughs> Thank you.